How does censorship affect writers? What does it reflect about American culture? Is it on the increase? Ken Follett's latest book is Dangerous Fortune. Judy Blooms is Here's to You, Rachel Robinson. And Rita Mae Browns is Dolly. And I'm pleased to have the three of them here. This is censorship in America in 1994 on books that would seem on the surface not to even be the least bit controversial. Uh, well, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me about you first. I mean, you... Well, I always... Uh, there's always you're a... not writing for teenagers, you're not writing about lesbian relationships. So what is it you write about that gets them riled up? Uh, sex. Oh, is, is, um, <laughs> <laughs> sex is what always gets them riled up. No question yes, about right. that. Sex is what gets them riled up. And Someone I, said it's sexuality, swear words, and Satanism. That that's you? Right. Yeah, yes, that's right. But go ahead, Ken. Yeah, but, uh, well, uh, there's always a love story in one of my novels. Yeah. And uh, I, artistically, I just think it's much better when there's a, an, a, a relationship that has emotional tension in it for there to be a physical resolution. And a lot of books... <laughs> A lot of books end with a physical resolution. It might orgasm, be... Orgasm, is that what he's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm Take, sorry, for yeah. example, <laughs> if two people hate each other for ten chapters, then, then it's, it's very satisfying if at some point they have a stand-up row or right. the guest of fisticuffs. Right. Uh, at the end of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, the house burns down. Remember that? Mm -hmm. It's physical. It's a physical resolution. And uh, the, the physical resolution of a love story is a sex scene. And when I write sex scenes, when I read sex scenes, I want to know what happened. I don't just want to close the bedroom door. As a reader, I want to know what they did. How did they feel when they were taking their clothes off? Were they nervous? Were they shy? All that, I think, is a terrific part of the story. So I put all that in, and a few people dislike it. Most people with me enjoy it, and they think it's part of, the, part of what a novel is all about. But a few people hate it. And in Kansas, you were... Yeah, well, the, what happens is that people get very nervous about young people ah, reading these yeah. scenes. And uh, uh, I think that's dumb, actually. I mean, there is, a lot of people think that you can keep sex a secret from young people. Yeah. This, this is a project that has failed. <laughs> Always <laughs> failed. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, but people still try and do it. Or, or if you talk about it, then they're going to do it. Yeah. So if they read about it, or if they read about it, that's right. what I mean. Nobody's if they read talking about to them about it, but yeah. if they read Some about it, they'll think they're going to do it anyway, uh, actually. Uh, <laughs> but teenagers, I mean, I understand now when it comes into play, what's, what happened to you? But it's what younger than teenagers. To to you? Well, when, I mean, when I started to write 20-something years ago, as you said, I was in America. It never occurred to me to be concerned that there was censorship. I wrote from inside. I wrote what I knew to be right. true about kids and about growing up and what happened several years later when when things got organized here really after 1980 is when the is when the censors got themselves organized is that anything having to do with puberty was um, to be banned because if kids didn't read about puberty then it would never happen to them it's the same thing yeah. if they don't read about sex they won't do it. be interested but that I was teaching them about this thing called puberty and this was something that they didn't want their kids to know about you, but you also talked about issues that, uh, that were important that, that young people were talking about, too, like masturbation. Yes? Well, that's part of puberty. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean uh, right. I mean, to say the word You were talking about things like that, uh, as teenagers are talking about things like that. Well, probably they're not talking about masturbation, but, they, but I, what I wanted to... Because nobody was talking about it when I was a kid, and yeah. so I thought I was the only kid in the world to ever do that. And the letters that come in to me say, after they've read my book, Dini, which does have some female masturbation in it, yeah. um, I thought that there was something wrong with me. I thought I had a disease, and thank you for letting me know that, that this is okay, that this is normal, that this is natural. Um, masturbation, far more than sexual intercourse or anything else that you can think of, um, terrifies those who are terrified of sex. Why? Well, why? Well, you've just given me a great idea. Yeah. Now I'm going to write a book on masturbation called Make Yourself at Home. <laughs> <laughs> you, because, it's because they don't want kids, girls particularly, sure. to, to find um, pleasure in sexuality. That's mm. very frightening. We're not talking about all people. We're talking no. just about well, I, I the come back. I want to come back to that in a minute. Sure. Who are we talking about? And when we talk about censors and people who want... Who is it? I mean, are... are 
what, what are they organized or not organized, that kind of thing. Uh, because there is this thing now called the National Coalition Against Censorship, which you all mm. are here in New York as part of. They tried to stop your book before it was even published? Well, they did. First of all, you had a hard time getting published. I mean, I had splinters in my nose from the best doors in town. <laughs> I mean, bam, bam, bam. I just kept getting knocked around. And, I mean, agents threw me out of their office because my first novel, it was my third book, but it was my first novel, has as its heroine uh, an unrepentant gay character. Um, I mean, she, she frolics and celebrates life in every form. And oh, I, I, I finally got published this little teeny press that gave me a thousand dollars, and that was Ruby Fruit Jungle, and it sold seventy thousand copies without an ad. And uh, word of mouth, r literally word of mouth. Was and this Doris Publishing? Was uh, it? Daughters. Daughters Publishing, right? And of course, I was I was stunned at the backlash. You know, I mean, I had bomb threats. I had I got shot at once. I got I mean, I got beat up. I remember mm -hmm. once I left a meeting and this guy picked me up and threw me against a wall and called me a pervert. Now I would take it as a compliment, I guess. Yeah. I but I mean, people were violent that I could show that, there, that people could live other than the standard heterosexual life and be happy and productive. I mean, this was just a, a, a call to war for these people. Yeah. Now, when we talk about censoring, are we talking about libraries are doing this? Are we talking about school boards are doing this? Who's doing it? And, and the point ought to be made is that each of you are talking about isolated instances, are you not? I mean, we're not talking about a widespread campaign across the country to ban everything Ken Follett writes. No, no. but I think I get the feel that, that this is not completely spontaneous. I get the feeling that, that uh, there's some organization behind all this, don't you? Yes, there's a great deal of organization behind it. There, there are still isolated cases, I think, and certainly through the 70s. Um, what I experienced were isolated cases. And even now, there may be... You know, a, a library here, a school district there, or something? Well, it's not usually a library or school district. It's a parent who's, who's right. complaining, who's running into school, waving a book right. and saying, what have you got? We don't even know how many times a frightened um, principal orders a teacher or a librarian to just quietly remove whatever book is take, in question. Take the safe way out. Take the safe way out. What we know about is how many times... Um, we only know when it, when it gets some publicity or when somebody within that community stands up and says, wait a second, yeah. you know, we're not, we don't want to do this. We don't want to ban these books. Or we have policies for people who are complaining about books. You have to go through a policy. You have to fill out mm -hmm. this form and tell us what it is about this book. And then we will sit down and we will meet about it and we'll decide. And that's the way that the American Library Association and, and other groups hope that it would be done. It's not always done that way. There are many things to talk about, but I just want to, while in that context, what is it you want to do? What is the National Coalition Against Censorship doing? And, I mean, it, and what kind of organization is this, and what is it that you hope to do, other than to say, we don't want this to happen in America, and we want to talk about the First Amendment, and we want to talk about freedom of expression here, and we want to make sure that there are no shibboleths out here about, uh, when, if you write about a sex scene, people are going to go out and try to do it. What, what well, the National Coalition is a group of, of many organizations right. um, doing exactly what you said, trying to protect our rights to read and to choose what we want to read um, for all age groups. And they are the group that is there at the other end of the phone when, when a teacher is being threatened, when, when the teacher's job is in jeopardy because he or she used a certain book in the classroom. Um, that person can call the National Coalition, or if I hear about it, I call the National Coalition and CAC, and a human being, a caring human being, will be on the phone immediately that day to offer help and support to the person who is, who is in trouble out there. Yeah. Anybody who wants to stand up, to take a stand, um, to make sure that this doesn't happen in his or her community, um, there are... There are branches of this all over the country of, of people who are fighting censorship. 